Welcome back. I um, hope that you found the focus on fluency interesting and enjoyable. Uh, don't forget that the tasks that you carried out, either alone or with colleagues, are tasks that you can use in the classroom. If you enjoyed some of the fluency games or the ideas for them, your learners will as well. So what we've done is to look at what we actually mean by fluency. And fluency does involve bringing all linguistic resources together. Fluency involves delivering language with reasonable, but not unreasonable, hesitation. Many of us, however fluent we may be, are not perfectly fluent. We do have um, pauses. There are times when we can't find the word. These are natural features of speaking, and as I hope we've shown, assessors are sympathetic to this. A reasonable degree of fluency is what we're listening out for. I hope we've also shown that fluency will be different in different parts of the international spoken ESOL test. In part one, the candidate is giving personal information. He or she knows the answers, so a reasonable degree of fluency is to be expected. In part two, the role play situations, the candidate doesn't always know what to expect. In broad terms, candidates know because the topics and the functions are there in the handbook, as I hope you noticed when we went through. But the candidate will naturally pause, ask for repetition, in order to check that the intended message is communicated. In part three, there is the exchange of information between candidate and interlocutor. And again, a reasonable degree of fluency may be expected. In part four, there is the long term with preparation time. And with preparation time, candidates can, if they use it wisely, organise the thoughts and manage discourse effectively. Fluency obviously plays a, the same role at all levels, but the expectations we have of somebody described as an achiever are very different from those of someone described as an expert or a master. And I hope we've shown how this is taken into account. It's undeniable that there are tensions between fluency and particularly accuracy. Um, many teachers are surprised to see that fluency is just as important as accuracy in the overall assessment. But when you think of the real world, and let's face it, Common European Framework of Reference is all about the real world, a lot of people are far more interested in a, a user being fluent and getting the message across than in being completely accurate. So don't be afraid to loosen the tie, sit back and relax, and let candidates develop fluency, not at the expense of accuracy, but sometimes without that particular focus. If you've enjoyed some of the activities, if you've used them with colleagues, or if you plan to use them with your own learners, then that's great, because what we're trying to do is not keep people into a rigid format for an examination, but to develop real-life skills which will help people to communicate. And in the world of international English, fluency is a vital factor in effective communication. Don't forget, there are workshops on the other skills and sub-skills. So if you would like to join us again, please feel free to click onto the workshops on communication, range, accuracy and pronunciation. Also on the International Spoken ESOL and ESOL Overview. And on the writing, listening and reading workshops. I hope that by working together, we can get better and better results for candidates and that we can promote effective learning, teaching and make the assessment easier for the examiners to pass candidates. Thanks and hope to see you again. Bye.